it's okay. It's okay. Let us talk to like come to pray do my prayers. Cause we don't have a space for the woman. Please film this. This is what the woman's role is in Islam. That's what they're doing the most. A bitter conflict is raging within the Muslim community. You can't even respect us, and then you expect me to turn around and listen to you as a brother. Give the sister respect, and I'll give you respect back, brother. As the row about Muslim women's veils rages on in the press and in government, we explore the hidden battle between Muslim women and men. Pal, you don't stop recording, yeah? Come on, make a move. Make a move. We're not asking to have the rights in the mosque and take over. Muslim women in Britain are fighting for access to the mosques and control over their lives. It's a dispute that could dramatically change the face of Islam in Britain. A mosque is in a man's territory. A mosque is a house of God. It belongs to Allah. It doesn't belong to them. It's everyone's. You know, all this going on, all this terrorism, all this stuff, if the women were equal footing with the men, we could change that. It could completely change the way our society is, the way that British Muslims live today. Just imagine 50% of the most talented people within our community contributing back into the community and giving them that power to do so. It would change the whole face of the Muslim landscape in Britain. Muslims in Britain feel under constant attack. Jack Straw's recent comments about the veil have stirred up a whole new row. And it seems that when people think about Muslims, they make the link with subservient women, shady mosques, terrorism, and a resistance to integrate. But for a new generation of British Muslim women, it's time for a change. They want to turn Muslim society on its head and change those views forever. And the catalyst for this change, the mosque, some mosques, like this one, allow women in for prayers, but recent research suggests that up to 60% of Britain's mosques don't allow women in to pray. Unlike these women, many have to worship in their own homes by themselves. This crucial difference between how men and women pray has come to symbolise everything that's wrong with their community. Women's access to the mosque may seem like a Muslim-only problem of little national significance, but those pushing for this change say it could improve the way Muslims interact with mainstream society and, for the first time, allow British Muslim women to define their own roles. This is um, the first day, the launch of our, our Women in the Mosques campaign. I mean, this is a subject that, that MPAC has been... Over the next months, I'll be following a Muslim pressure group, the women from the Muslim Public Affairs Committee, MPAC UK. They're campaigning to overturn traditional roles for women within Muslim society, and they're starting with the mosques. Yeah, we're not asking. You know, we do know how we're meant to behave when you go to a mosque. Exactly. They want to transform them into thriving community centres where women can participate on an equal footing with men. Yeah, what we're actually doing today, we're going to go down to this mosque that doesn't allow women in, and we've looked up in the Muslim directory, and it's proudly listed as having 600 places for men to pray, and none <laughs> for women. But this isn't just a cultural battle. At its heart is a religious debate about how Islamic teachings are interpreted. Is at the time of the Prophet, women did go to the mosque, despite their husband didn't like it, because they're, they're not allowed to forbid anybody. Your husband cannot, or your dad or your brother cannot say to you, you cannot go to the mosque. Exactly. After repeated refusals over the phone, the women have decided to gate crash Friday prayers at an East London mosque which doesn't allow women in to pray, Balfour Road Mosque in Ilford. If you have one of them. I think that this kind of campaign could only happen here in the West with its democratic traditions. Most Muslim countries would never tolerate such a public challenge to the authority of the mosques. Without doubt, some mosques in Britain do allow limited women's activities, but the majority still don't let them in for the regular prayers of the day. So I'm just covering my head because um, we're entering the mosque's premises. Excuse me. You're going to the office. Sorry? You're going to the office. No, we're going to sit and pray. 
They're just getting the guy who runs the mosque to come out to speak to the ladies. And I guess this is where they're going to make their case to be allowed into the mosque. We've come, we've come to pray Jumma prayers because no, no, no. we, no, we rang up and said we wanted to pray Jumma prayers. No, no place here, no place here, please. Go. No place, no place for women, no place for women. No, go home. Tell him, tell him, get out. Tell him, get out. Uncle, it's okay. Please film this. This is what the woman's role is in Islam. That's what they do in the mosque. Please film this. And this guy as well. You shouldn't actually say anything for this Muslim. Be your sister in Islam. Yeah, of course you are. Of course so you didn't actually say anything on your behalf. I am so disappointed. He just shut the door on me. But I thought you had to make decisions here, so I. We don't have a space for the woman. People walk there and will be. Yeah. You want to mix with the man? No, we do not want to mix with the man. We will be here. They will be here. No, men in front, the women behind. Just In keeping with Islamic teachings, they try to find a space to pray behind the men. Come on, make a move. Make a move! Brother, 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 brother. F off. We went to the front door and we got the door slammed in our face and the hand does not make us feel as Muslim sisters. Okay, so the women have been more or less turned away. First of all, they were told they could pray in a small part of it, but there seems to be quite a lot of resistance from the men. Um, and what's happening now is that we've been told to, physically been told to stop filming here. But at the moment, the girls are still trying to make their case, but at the moment, they're not having any success at all. After continuing threats, our production team decided to step back. Um, that wasn't going anywhere. You know, we were just getting, you know, mobbed by by all these men. You know, giving us abuse about we should be at home, we should have our faces covered. You know. Um. I suppose I can kind of feel sorry for them in some sense. They think you know this is the only haven they have from the modern world. You know, they can hide away, keep their language, keep their customs, keep their. You know, they don't have to integrate with society, it's their place they can hide away. And I understand that they want to keep that, but it's not fair. And it's not fair on the youth and it's not fair on the women of this country. The way that they reacted to these women asking for a place to pray, to me, really sums it up. They don't have a full rounded answer. They don't have a, a proper argument. They get agitated, they get upset, um, and, you know, they, they react, in, in, as you've seen, in some sort of um, inappropriate man in an inappropriate manner, that there isn't an argument. It's not Islamic. This isn't what Islam teaches. I think. What are we going to do now? Does everybody want to pray? Yeah, well, we have to pray at some point. The level of hostility had been so intense, the only place left to pray is on the pavement on the other side of the road. It's quite shocking that the men were prepared to put up such a fight, that they were, they were so adamant that these women did not belong in the mosque, that they didn't want anything. They treated them like pariahs. Uh, I, I find that quite, quite shocking. None of the men would give me their point of view. Was this hostile reaction because of religious belief, cultural traditions, or a fear of losing power? I'm starting to worry. What trouble might lie ahead when their campaign spreads further north? Paul, you don't stop recording, yeah? A group of Muslim women are fighting for the right to pray in mosques and to redefine their role in Muslim society. Please sign the petition. Please sign the petition of those sisters. They're your sisters, they're your mothers. MPAC have come to Barking Mosque in East London, which does allow women access to pray, in the hope of gathering signatures for a petition. Go to space. If you're not Muslim women, you can go to space. If you're a Muslim woman, you can't get on the committee. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam no. said that no woman should be refused into the mosque. That's right. It's not fard for her to go to the mosque, but if she's allowed to go in the mosque, no one is allowed to stop her. But we are being stopped. During the Prophet's time, women were allowed in the mosques. But soon after his death, disputes started about women's rights. Disputes which are still very much part of Muslim life today. I asked a lot of imams to explain the Islamic basis for excluding women. One was willing to talk on camera, but for religious reasons, he didn't want his face shown. 
During the time of the Prophet, women had 100% right to come to the mosque. But during the time of the second caliph, women had started to come to the mosque all dressed up, coming in with makeup and causing distraction. The caliph, along with his companions, decided to stop them from attending the mosque. This was not just his decision, all his companions agreed with him. Now, if at that time, women being in the mosque with their finery was a problem, the morality of today's society is much worse. So, if it was forbidden then, it is absolutely forbidden today. But this mosque leader to justify women being banned from the mosque because of the statement of Umar, the second caliph of Islam, is it's not a valid interpretation of Islam because the point is, we follow what the Prophet said. The Prophet said, do not stop the women from entering the mosques. You know, so the Prophet knew that you know, maybe there would be issues, maybe there would be you know, problems when the women enter the mosque, but he said, don't, don't stop them. And that's what the Prophet said. So we should follow what the Prophet said. One could always come up with all sorts of arguments about complete segregation, but there never really was complete segregation even in the Prophet's time. And then a society can't function on the basis of complete segregation. We know that. So why are we talking about situations where men are saying, well, I can't even be in the same room as a woman, when they know that theologically as well as socially, that's almost impossible. Hey, your, your, your sister's good enough to be doctors, not good enough to be committed on the committee? They could make space if they wanted well, to. Well, definitely in their hearts they can make a space, you know? They've got a small heart and they don't bother. They can they easily make two or three rows yeah, in the back. I think uh, everyone's have the equal right and I think ladies have the right as the men's as well. Everyone is being so positive, not a single opposition to us. You know what, hands up, I thought These that guys, I had no guys, faith yeah. in this mosque. Zero faith. I had a face like no, no. dogs now come in here. And now, the amount of signatures that we've got, I'm so amazed at the people yeah, here. I'm really yeah, like, yeah. please. Yes. You're saying that there's not one woman on the committee and that's their fault because they've not attended the meeting. This is in the process of the meeting, you know. We are here... I'm but getting into prey is only the start. The women also want to get onto the committees where the real power lies. The reason is because men folks think that the women cannot control this institution. Islam says they cannot control or they can manage such a big institution. No, the Islam doesn't say that. So do not say that women are you know, no, not no, intelligent no. to be in part of the mosque no, committee. No, You're not giving the women the opportunity no, to be part of the is committee. Control a different thing, my love. Control, no, control is a different thing. I mean, controlling such a big institution. No. You said women can't control. That's brainwashing, that is. This all goes beyond the right to pray in the mosque. It's about the powerful all-male committees that run them. Within Islam, there is no hierarchy, so there's no such thing as an Archbishop of Canterbury. Each mosque employs its own imam and decides what he teaches. But I can pray next to another brother at the time of praying. Because there's no hierarchy, MPAC are going to have to change the views of every mosque individually. All we're saying is not asking to become imams or anything. But that change may be slow coming because another problem is the limited role for women scholars in Britain's mosques. One thing I do know is that a woman can't be an imam, and that's because she can't do an essential part of the job, lead men in prayers. Another important part of the job is to give religious and moral guidance to the congregation. The problem is, is that that doesn't normally include women. Rukhsana Shah is one of many Muslim women in Britain who's had the same Islamic scholarly training as imams. She can't be employed as an imam, so she works as a prison chaplain, helping women at Holloway Prison. Do you think a female imam in a mosque can play a similar role to a male imam? Yes, I could lead the women in prayer. I could have uh, educational circles where you teach the women of Islam that their role, uh, their rights, because they can challenge men in that way. At the moment, most of the women are suffering because they don't know their Islamic rights. So when women will come, inshallah, hopefully they do, and they do take active part in the mosque, then the mosque will be for the whole of the community. Could women's involvement in the mosque change the very fabric of Muslim life and Muslim yes, community? Yes, yeah, yes, because it's very difficult to go and speak to Imam about some of your personal you know, issues that women have about marriage or, or it's very difficult and they don't do it. I, I don't know anybody who goes to Imam and tells, to, tells him, you know, to how, how to sort out her marriage problem. I, I don't know anyone who's done that. 
But I think had it been a female there, she would have gone and explained this and found a solution to the problem. I couldn't help feeling that it's going to be a long time before we see women scholars like Rotsana employed, not as chaplains, but where it really counts in British mosques dealing with women's issues. At the moment, the big issue that's impacting on Muslim women like Roxana is the headdress controversy. Closer to home, her daughter Sabah has stopped wearing the hijab. I mean, I would love her to wear hijab. Absolutely, you know. I, I, and I remember when she took a decision to take it off, I didn't sleep the whole night. Really? I did not, know, And I thought she rejected Islam. Do you feel you've rejected Islam by not wearing hijab? Not at all. I think, in a way, it's, it's made me stronger because it's not like the textbook sort of Islam where you're really just memorising everything and then you're saying it again. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like, it, you know, in a way, it's made me a lot more confident and strong about what I believe, whereas now people respect what I say and listen to what I say and then they can judge me after, after I've spoken. And I've, I have seen a difference and I have seen both sides of it. And, and I think it's made me stronger in some ways, and I hate to admit it, with, not wearing a hijab. All Muslims have a wide range of beliefs and interpretations of their faith. None more conspicuous and personal than a woman's choice of headdress. Most outsiders simply see it as the domination of women by Muslim men. You know, society thinks if um, a woman's covered up or she's got the headscarf on or she's wearing the jubab or she's got the niqab on, oh, you're oppressed. Says who? I'm not oppressed. Do I look oppressed? Originating in a Quranic text which instructs men and women to dress modestly, it's been interpreted differently all over the world. For me, dressing modestly is covering my head and not wearing tight-fitting clothes. Why don't you cover your face, though, completely? Why don't you wear a niqab? Because I don't feel that that's what Islam... From what I have read, that's not what I've understood. From, from so in, in that case, why would you defend those women who do because want to Because they have a court? right. They have, they have that right to choose that. They, even if I don't agree with it, even if I don't understand it, they still have that personal choice. Despite the high-profile row about the niqab, it's still worth remembering it's only worn by less than 5% of Muslim women. Jack Straw, he seems to have these preconceived ideas of women who choose to wear niqabs and making that a huge issue. It is a barrier, and the whole point of a niqab is it's supposed to be a barrier, but in a positive sense, a barrier of uh, protection for the woman. It's not someone is uh, telling me or commanding me to do it, and, you know, if someone is doing that, even like my husband, he's, he doesn't say that. And it's just only God where we submit ourselves, you know, men and women. Do, do you feel that, though you're talking to me and I haven't got my face covered, do you feel like you, you have got a slight advantage? Because you can read me much better than I can read you. It's not about a game, you know, it's not about one-upmanship. You know, this is part of our religion, this is part of how we live our life, this is, um, you know, part of us. Have you had enough of your chocolate cake? 22-year-old Anika Wahid from MPAC is a recent convert to the headdress. She's like thousands of young Muslim women now turning their backs on Western culture and adopting traditional symbols of their faith. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. It says in Islam you should cover, you know, it's, it's a sense of security, you know, protection, you know, and you feel like you've got God protecting you as well when you've got it on. <laughs> my sister's old mate from school. Tell me what she was like back then. How would she dress? What, what would she wear? What would she be like? What was her behaviour like? She was like, you know, rude girl. Everyone in school was scared of her. She could be older. <laughs> Boys up. Boys up. That didn't change. Is it a surprise to see her with her head covered? Um, it's a nice surprise. It's not like a surprise, oh my gosh. I think Anika is typical of many young Muslim women who now see the hijab and even the niqab as a symbol of female empowerment. It's the same confidence that's driving their determination to change the mosques. Back on the campaign trail, the women are now trying a new tactic with Balfour Road, the mosque that slammed its doors on them. He's gone. Can he hang up? Yeah. The male members of the mosque won't talk to the women, so perhaps they'll talk to Impact's men. So we're gonna ho you hopefully now, inshallah, are gonna go into the mosque, um, and you're going to basically ask them what is their plan, what are they doing so that women can come into the mosque and pray. 
don't take no for an answer. You have to make sure that they realise that we aren't going to take no for an answer. Switch on that charm. Sharp can do anything. An hour later, the boys returned after speaking to a mosque committee member. Whilst there is Islamic evidence that they're allowed to just refuse any, well, he said, uh, any uh, joke law. He said that he was born in the 1950s and since then till, from, from since then till today, never once has he ever seen a woman in a mosque like in Pakistan, in this country, wherever. He said, well, we are from this school of thought in Pakistan. He said, well, do you not think we're living in a different sort of um, era, different, you know, different world in, in the UK? I thought, nope. We have the same God, same Prophet, same belief, same Islam. We can do everything as we do in Pakistan. We can do the same here. And because of these reasons, women are allowed in the mosque. In Mecca, there. Medina, Jerusalem, three most important places in Islam. <laughs> women go to all three. Yeah. yeah. Why can't they go to a mosque in Alford? Mm. I haven't just been hearing these opinions from older men. To my surprise, I've heard many young Muslim men repeating the same arguments. And behind this continuing tradition is the drive to maintain segregated religious education. Most Muslim children in Britain receive their Islamic education in the mosque, but as girls reach puberty, they're encouraged to leave. As boys continue on, the girls are mostly taught at home by women. Traditionally, some Muslim girls are discouraged from further education or a career. Most decisions are made by the father, and daughters tend to follow in their mother's footsteps. But Halima from MPAC is different. She had a strong religious upbringing, and also her family encouraged her to go to university. Do you think your parents have been quite liberal with you compared yeah. to other Muslims? And yeah, I think I've, I've compared myself to my Muslim friends, and I've always had a lot more freedom than they have. Have you? Yeah. In what way? Just, I've just been allowed to go out more, allowed to do more things, been abroad a lot, you know. When you went to the mosques that you have gone to and you know tried to get those doors open, a lot of the people who turned you away were young guys. You know they weren't the older generation, which is what people think. It's like older men are turning these women away, but no, it's young men who are turning you away. Why do you think that was? Um, I think it's because they've been brought up in a way that you know their sisters are in the house, and for some reason that's you know a safe spot for their sisters to be. So it's to do with the whole stereotype, the, the mindset of these people. They've gone through the, the mosque system as boys alone and they've seen there haven't been girls around. Why should we change that now? Why suddenly should we allow women inside? I mean, their experience has been a male-only zone. The rights we have here, I, we can study and we can educate ourselves. They're Islamic rights. It's not a Western right that's come that's alien to Islam. For the first time, British-born Muslim girls are now doing twice as well at school as Muslim boys. Their increasing sense of confidence is now threatening the male power structure at home as well as the mosque. I've travelled north to Blackburn to meet with the women protesters again. A few mosques in Blackburn do allow women in for regular prayers. Today, MPAC are hoping to target one of the most powerful and conservative mosques that doesn't. So do you think that in challenging the status quo in the way that you are and kind of taking on these cold of taboos, that if you do make a change, that suddenly Muslim women are going to be pouring into the mosques. We truly believe yeah, we'll that. It might happen that overnight. Do you think when women got their vote in, in England, you, all of a sudden you saw 50% yeah, exactly. of the parliament filled with women? No, you didn't. It's it takes time happen, for them yeah. to gain the confidence and say, OK, this is how the system works. Yes, I, I'm not going to get shunned when I go into the mosque. So that, that confidence needs to be built. A Muslim woman living in, in Blackburn, how's her life going to change? Because at the moment being able to have access to the mosque. Well, at the moment, she's been shut off from the whole of the Muslim community. She can only mix with maybe you know, relatives and Muslims that she's met in college. Access to the mosque, mosque allows her to be involved in her community. Or maybe she's got problems at home and she, and she needs a safe haven. She can go to the imam, she can get help. She can get religious knowledge, you know, it's a, it will change her whole life. Her whole family life will... And the whole community will The whole community will benefit. Just imagine... Oh. 50% of the most talented people within our community contributing back into the community and giving them that power to do so, it would change the whole face of the Muslim landscape in Britain. With minutes to go before Friday prayers, they head off to the mosque in Millam Street. This time, they don't plan to try to get inside, but to hand out leaflets as the men leave. So how are you guys feeling about what you're about to do? Slightly nervous, nervous. I suppose. What? What's I'm this scared. to be nervous about? I don't know, I'm no, not nervous. We're apprehensive about what could happen, but we're, yeah. we're, we're ready, we're prepared. We're not doing anything we're wrong. We're not doing anything wrong, I'm we're asking for a moment. excited about actually, you know, putting this question out there for the first time and 
in, in this area. This <laughs> 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 Do you think women should never leave the house? At the moment we're away from our home. Can you take your camera away from here? Sorry. Do you mind? Sorry? Do you mind taking your camera away from um, me? Well, we've, told, we've told everybody that we're well, listen, on the street. Well, listen, I think if you're so a film on the street, you just go and film outside the house, but not right in the doorway. Well, yeah? I'll move back a bit. Do you mind? Yes, not back. Have you seen the, the hadith of the prophet? It's over there. You don't want to see the hadith of the prophet on the... On the you're not supposed to show your, you're not not supposed you're not to show your face to the man. I know you're not. We're not you're listen, listen. You're listen. 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 Oh, shut up. There ain't no respect for people like you. if you don't stop recording, yeah? I'm standing next to you, I'm watching you recording. Like, like, you can't even respect us, and then you expect me to turn around and listen to you as a brother. Give a sister respect, and I'll give you respect back, brother. Why is he speaking to me? Why are you here? Why are you here? Go home. Why am I here? Because I live here. Why, where do you live? Exactly, go on. Where? Where? Give us your address. Where? Where's your address? You don't live in this area. Why are you talking to me? You don't get out of my room. See you later. We don't want to talk to you. Hold on, bro. Just come down. You're going to deprive me from building Zohar and Namaz because of your own ego. We're not asking to have the rights in the mosque and take over the mosque. What we want to do is come and pray. You wearing a stomach dressing in embarrassing Islam, is there? At least slam the door properly, love. Let's just go. Come, girls, let's just go. Is there any part of you that can understand that you turn up here in quite a kind of, you know, very assertive, they see it as an aggressive move? They don't own the mosques. You might have contributed towards paying for the mosque, help build the mosque, because you want your place in Jannah, you want your place in heaven. That, that doesn't mean you own the mosque. It doesn't mean that gives you the right to stop sisters from praying my Zohar prayers. You know, I want to educate sisters here and let them know, you know what, sisters, when you feel that you're in trouble, you're in need, you need help, you can go, go to your mosque, go to your imam. On the way back to the car, we spotted groups of women coming out of a small terraced house. Just walking past it on the high street, and um, this is where the women have basically set themselves up as a place where they can pray because obviously they're not allowed into the mosque at, um, at least not the one we went to. Um, what the girls have done is they've asked if they can come in and pray. Most of the ladies we've been told have already left, the ones that normally pray here. This seems to contradict what many local men are claiming that women are happy praying at home on their own. These women's wish to pray together has led them to create their own place of worship. The women told me there were many more front room mosques just like this one across Blackburn. Would you like to say your prayers in the main mosque? We aren't allowed to pray there with the men. There are no facilities there for women. How do you benefit from saying your prayers here? We all come together here. It's good to pray together because we can meet each other, talk to each other and socialize. The mosque where the fracas took place refused to give their side of the story on camera but asked Lancashire Council of Mosques to speak for them. We are in a transitory state of change. There are many people within among Muslims who are uh, having still not understanding how the Islam allows the women and etc. So there are always certain individuals who take up different stands than overall policy of mosque. Women simply yeah. standing outside the mosque distributing leaflets, how is that? And also leaflets just, just simply saying women want access to the mosque. How is that an aggressive move? How is that an inappropriate move? In terms of campaigning for women's access to mosques, that's absolutely their right to do it, and if they get attacked or abused in any way while they're doing it, that is utterly to be condemned. Do you okay? condemn it? Absolutely, you can, of course I do. Do you condemn what Millam Street I, did that day? Well, I've day. said it. I'm not condemning Millam Street as a mosque. I'm condemning the people who perpetrated any act of aggression. In that case, would you invite these women back to the mosque and invite them to pray there? Would you try and facilitate that? 
we're, we're, we're happy to play. We, well, we're happy to play a role in facilitating that. Absolutely. We will make a provision for them to pray in the mosque the time they want to pray. Yeah. But if we know that they are coming, yeah, and it it will not be just a gesture of public relation. The LCM aren't promising permanent change. But if the women do manage to pray in the mosque, it would at least be a symbolic victory. But the following week, will things go the way MPAC planned? Will the LCM be able to deliver on their promise to access the mosque? Mosques are now preparing for the group's visit in just over a week's time. Meanwhile, I've come to a North London mosque to find out how it's benefited from women being involved. It's gone from having pariah status to becoming a beacon of hope. And the presence of women, far from being a problem, has actually helped turn things around. It is the infamous Finsbury Park Mosque. Several years ago, Abu Hamza, now in prison, and his supporters hijacked the mosque and turned it into a center of alleged terrorist activities. After a bitter struggle, the mosque committee finally threw him out. Since the mosque's relaunch, women have been encouraged to take a more active role. People, because of the bad press that the, that the mosque had had, were very scared about coming back in, and it took a long, it took a while to break those barriers with the Muslims in the area and tell them come here and this is a good mosque. You know, this is a place of God. There's no such thing as a good mosque and a bad mosque. It, just because of a, a handful of individuals, you know, that that shouldn't, that shouldn't, you know, prevent people from coming to a place of worship, a place of God. Around 200 local women now regularly use the mosque as a community centre where they can pray and learn more about their faith. Finsbury Park Mosque has come a long way in 18 months, but it doesn't yet have women on the management committee of the mosque. One mosque, which is in the process of potentially appointing its first woman committee member, is Albert Road Mosque in Ilford. Women have prayed here for 15 years. They have their own entrance and congregational space. Well, I'm an active member at the moment. I look after the ladies, I take care of the ladies. The ladies, if they've got an issue, they'll come to me and then I'll take it to the community member. Shireen's waiting to hear if her efforts running the women's activities will be rewarded with a seat on the committee. We are having an election soon and um, my name is being put forward to be uh, on the committee. How do you feel about that? Very proud, yes. I'm honoured to be on the committee. At last, I was beginning to get a feel for what all mosques in Britain could become, proper community centres with women actively involved. I asked the women's Quran class what they felt about other women who were excluded. I mean, there's a lot of mosques that they still think, you know, on principle, that women don't belong here, that women shouldn't be here. I think it's not right, because, you know, the getting knowledge is our equal right. Allah don't say the knowledge uh, is only for men. It is equal right for women and men both. People say they're Muslims and they read the Quran, Arabic, don't understand. I'm coming here now and I'm getting so much knowledge, which I didn't have. I have two children of my own, so I've been teaching them something that I thought I knew, but I obviously didn't. Everything is very clear in the Quran about your rights. So do you think the women should demand those rights? They should demand them. They should demand them. But I also think the, it's, it's not just the women, it's all the community at large. It's everybody has to play a part.
But there are Muslim women who are demanding even more from mosques. Some believe that it's also the imam's job to handle the more serious and sensitive aspects of family life, divorce, marital problems, and domestic violence. In a Muslim women's refuge in a northern town, they're helping hundreds of victims of domestic violence every year. But it's a subject so difficult that many local mosques just don't want to help. Levels of domestic violence within the Muslim community are no worse than the rest of Britain. But within Muslim society, there are unique pressures on female victims to keep silent. For most women, in terms of violence, they will put up with it because um, in terms of their honour, that's the biggest issue that keeps them in the relationship no matter what's happening. It's usually when the, um, the, the, the violence against the children starts that the women then decide that they've had enough and they've got to do something. Mosque should be an integral part of our community. And if you look at our town and the small size of it, we've got five mosques now, which as a, a community resource, it's a huge resource. Yet in terms of how they're used, yes, they're used for the um, prayers mm. and the, the mosque list, but that's it. I asked some victims of domestic violence about their experiences. I got so mad. This time he hit me and I didn't fall. I just stood there and I don't know what, but something inside of me pushed him and said, no, enough is enough. I ended up choking him on the floor. After I got married, my husband said my family was too liberal. He said I should cover my face. My father said, she's yours, she will do whatever you ask. So I covered my face. As our daughters grew older, they used to ask why their father wouldn't allow them to go to school or get an education. He said, why do they need an education? Did you ever try to get anyone involved to help you? Did you try and involve I the mosques or the, any religious leaders to try I and talk to your husband? There is no facility at the mosque for us to go and tell our troubles and get help. If there was, we could have gone there. If you go to the mosque, they say, bring a man with you, brother or husband. Can't we speak for ourselves? What struck me was how strongly these women felt that the mosques and the imams should play a major role in dealing with family problems. Back in East London, the MPAC women are off to Balfour Road Mosque again this time to present their petition. So what are you guys about to go and do? Um, inshallah, present finally our petition to them and see if anyone will, will discuss whether they will consider any of the issues that we're, you know, bringing to them. Um, it's um, Anayat Patel here, the president of the mosque. Well, we're just going to stand out here like lemons. Turn the camera off, I'll come outside. They didn't want to be filmed speaking to the women, so we stepped back. I'm over here, I'm back here, I'm back here. After a brief chat, they finally accepted MPAC's petition. So how do you think that went then? <laughs> Terrible. No, but what did we expect? You know, I think we still need to chase them up on it. We can't let it drop. No, oh, we can't no. have gone this far and just let yeah, it drop. Yeah, absolutely. It's purely on the basis that we're sisters. They're not going to speak to us. Look at the way they were treating us. I'd love to see yeah. them react like that if they, if someone treated their sisters like that or their, or their daughters or their mothers or anyone. Anyone spoke to me like that and my dad was there. He wouldn't tolerate it. And we're not asking to, you know, break into the mosque. We just handed in a petition. You still have some damn respect. We've handed it in. wonder if that will make things start ticking. MPAC have not yet got a reply to their petition and Balfour Road Mosque turned down our repeated requests to put forward their point of view. The women decide to take their case to the Muslim Council of Britain, the largest official body in the country representing hundreds of mosques and Muslim groups. Our approach is slightly different from yours. We do not condemn, we try to persuade them. A lot of people are not, not now coming to the idea that, yes, they need to have space for uh, women, they need to have activities for children. The problem, as I said, unlike Christian church, we are not a hierarchy. People are not obliged to listen to MCP. They are, we do not have any coercive power upon them. We can only plead and persuade. They turned up at, at 
a mosque, a couple of mosques, not just the one. Um, they gave them a hostile reception. They asked to pray. They were told they couldn't. Really? They but gave leaflets out outside. They were told severe. to go but away. Severe. That is what, what Islam teaches us. So what this person did Slowly, to slowly, me. slowly, try again. Try to do what again? Yes. Try again. Persuade them. Make friends with their the elders' wives, perhaps, and then go through them. <laughs> Volunteers can do it. It is possible. Is it? Is it possible? If we want to achieve it, we cannot impose. Did our prophet do that? No, he didn't. So uh, he did. He did. Persuasion. He, uh, yeah, he, he always persuaded, believed, but he didn't have he to always oh, believed in go persuasion. and speak to so and so's wife, be their friend, and you'll get I mean, into it. Oh, you know what? His way could work. His persuasive way. Because he put it as a yeah, only priority. for the elders. It's yeah, only going to work for the elders was, for five yeah. minutes. He, he made it number one, and he yeah. was like sending them leaflets and meeting them and setting conferences and really making okay. an issue. He could do it. If, if they use the, the power, MCB have the power. They've got. If MCB come to a mosque, all the mosques get really excited. Did you, did you guys find that useful? Because. They're MCB, they've got the power, they've got the authority, and then they tell us our, our approach is, oh, subtly, we need to go in subtly. That's, and then he suggested, oh, go through the wives. <laughs> that was funny. The wives. That Make was friends funny. with the wives. <laughs> We're never going to get a place in the mosque if we had that attitude. <laughs> A week later in Blackburn, the Lancashire Council of Mosques has promised MPAC's women access to Millen Street Mosque for prayers. First, though, they call them in to discuss the previous week's verbal fracas outside the mosque. I welcome you here. I think that uh, the campaigns which you are running, whether I agree or not the style of it, but uh, I think it has virtuous principles, and I think that that is a kind of struggle within the Muslim community to develop. I get the feeling that assumptions have already been made by your organization, that not much work is being done as far as mosques are concerned with women. Let me clear you on that. There's a lot of good work that's being done. But you have, how you have destroyed a piece of good work. I'm very we, angry we with your organization. Last Friday, there was an incident outside the mosque, correct? Yes. Do you know that how awful that impacted on my Yes, work? I do. We were do attacked there. How awful was it I for you? I think that's disgraceful that you were that, attacked. That's correct. That, but let me give you an example. So why are you upset with us? I have never been refused entry into any mosque. So why were they? Yes. So why were we? That's why the point. Why were we? That is special. So if you're not from the local area, they get they get attacked, they get eggs thrown at them? We've been doing the same thing in Ilford and in other areas. Um, we had put sister. You must be clear. We are a very different community. We are the most divisive right. community. Sister, sometimes. when you're Muslim, when you're Muslims, same society is applied no everywhere. If there's no understanding of the concept, like, then, listen, then listen, you have a problem. Why would you pick Millam Street Mosque? Well, what would you choose? No, just, we just, want. No, 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 choose let me no, let me ask you a question. I chose it. Wait. I ask you a question. Mm. Yeah. According to their school of thought, of yes. that Correct. women are preferred to yeah. pray at home. Fine. I agree. That's so therefore they do not have a facility that anyone come to pray at that particular place. But they do have a facility. They do, but Let they did not want to give you facility. Fine, that's the thing. The second thing is, do you attack no, someone? Honestly, Hold on, do no, you attack you someone? No. After, all you do is you give them a leaflet. No. Do you attack someone for that? Because you have a different, no. completely different opinion. Why are you condemn that mosque? Why are you condemned? Well, because you're attacking these girls. No. So you won't condemn No, I condemned the action. They apologized to me when I had a meeting. We were attacked. We were attacked. We were attacked. Your action was provocative? No, no. no. So, what is that provocative? Hey, hey, hey! Calm down! No, I think that's the first time I should you calm down. One minute, one minute, Asker. listen. Yeah. Asker. In this Mubarak move of Ramzan Sharif, I think we are totally being disrespectful to each other. We, we openly, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, invited you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, 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 listen, calm down. Calm down. This man shouted. No, listen, everybody, no, I think everybody needs to calm down. We all shouted. So, Raise your hand if you want to have a talk, and we'll talk. So, please. No, you said that the women must be on the management committee of the mosque. Why they need to be on the management committee when they have over their own women's committees? What is the need? It is a political point. It is not an Islamic point which you are trying to make. Tomorrow you can say, why she is not a president of the mosque? Why not? Why not? Yeah. So, the, 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 As the time to pray approaches, the LCM escort MPAC to the mosque. That's not the Islamic framework. That we go the feminist approach. As they near Millam Street, they're met by a member of the congregation. 
Much to their surprise, he shows them not into the main mosque, but a terraced house opposite. So the girls have got permission to go and read their zuhr, their afternoon prayers, in this building here, which is separate to the mosque. They've been told it's part of the mosque, but anyway, I'm going to go inside and find out what exactly it's like in there. So, did you guys pray? No. Um, Why not? Conditions in there aren't really particularly clean. It's, it's just a house, basically, but it's quite a dilapidated old house. It's damp, it smells, it's dirty. And when you're supposed to pray, like the whole purpose of like evolution is that you're clean when you pray. So if you're clean, how can you go in a place that isn't clean and pray? Guys have only just been here a few minutes and they've just come out to from reading their prayers and already there seems to be a lot of friction and tension in the air. Having refused to pray in the house, the women finally get into the mosque. They join local women to listen to the Imam's Ramadan sermon in a separate area from the men. We've just been inside and there's a sermon going on at the moment and it's about a hundred women all sitting around in a, in a square. Very good facilities for the women, but this is only for the month of um, Ramadan. I think that the mosque uh, uphold their promise, what they, what they promised, though at times there were provocations, uh, which I felt was inappropriate, to be honest. Uh, but at the end, I think it's all right uh, that uh, we managed to do what we, what we wanted to do. So you started off your day really optimistic. How are you feeling now? It's still a long journey ahead. Yeah. But I think we have taken some steps along it because what I feel more than anything is is we have put this question on the agenda. We got our foot in. Did you work here, Dad? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just no. the beginning. <laughs> it's just the beginning. Petition for what? Um, basically, I don't know if you know about Four Road Mosque. When I first started on this journey, I thought the impact women were on a hopeless mission, but the attitudes they were trying to change were too deeply entrenched, so it wasn't worth trying. But I now think it is possible to turn things around, despite the problem being rooted in culture and religion. If Britain's mosques are opened up, the Muslim girls might finally break away from traditional roles and young Muslim men might integrate better rather than retreat to their male-only mosques. What struck me the most is the number and diversity of British and Muslim women with a genuine desire for change. They may not all agree on the approach, but if they're successful, this could be the start of an exciting new dawn for Britain's Muslim community.